Hello, and welcome along to the next episode of the uh, series of videos that we're doing on setting up Chocolatey <clears throat> within an organization. Now, in the previous video, we looked at taking all of these uh, Nutkeg files that we have and pushing them up into our Nexus repository. Uh, and with that done, uh, the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a license file, or, or rather, more specifically, sorry, we need to create a package, a chocolatey package for our license file. So let's go ahead and jump in and see what that looks like. So in terms of where we are within the uh, organizational documentation, we're now on exercise four, which is entitled create a package for the license. So previously uh, in our uh, C Choco setup folder, uh, within the files folder there, there was, you were asked to place the chocolate license.xml file. And ultimately uh, using the uh, local installation script that we used, uh, that gets copied into the uh, C program data chocolatey license folder. And that's where Chocolatey will ensure that the uh, license is valid and uh, that you're basically able to make use of the Chocolatey for Business features. So that's what we were doing manually and it was part of the local setup script, so it, it just worked. But uh, in the uh, organizational uh, setup that we are discussing here, uh, we don't necessarily want to have to do that, uh, or we don't, we don't have to place the file in a certain location so that uh, we can then copy it into the next location, but rather uh, we want to wrap it up in a chocolate package. And then uh, typically a chocolate license file is valid for a year. Uh, so when you get a new one uh, by reaching out to the sales and support team, uh, you can renew the license. <clears throat> you can create a new chocolate package and then the mechanism of upgrading the package uh, is exactly the same as you would uh, for uh, uh, an application that you're installing. So under license, uh, exercise four here, uh, what it's saying is there's a script that we can use to uh, do the work of uh, installing that license file into the right place for us. So um, normal kind of caveats apply here. This is a script that I'm saying that you should use, uh, but you should definitely make sure that uh, it makes sense and you uh, don't want to run it obviously until you've verified that uh, it does what you want it to do. So let's just take a quick look through it and see what it's doing. So uh, to make things easier for deployments, let's create a package for the license file. We're going to grab the currently installed license to do this, but you uh, could use the one in the C Choco setup files folder. Um, so what's the script doing? The script is uh, setting the execution policy, uh, which we've spoken about before. It's finding where the license file lives. So the license file lives in our chocolate install folder, which we've just seen that it does. So that's the C program data chocolate license folder. Uh, the packaging folder is, uh, I think, where it's going to put it. So we don't that uh, that file that folder doesn't exist yet, but it must create it as part of this. Um, so it's going to create the packaging for us, and then it's going to create the package for us, and it's going to put it into the packages folder. Uh, it's going to use the uh, package ID of chocolate license. It's going to set up some additional variables here. Uh, validations is basically making sure that uh, it's in place. Uh, prior to running, ensure you've updated the license file manually, uh, and then it's it's going to spit out. It's it's putting out chocolate there, so it's basically letting us see that it's got a valid license. Uh, it's checking the expiration date. Um, validate the expiration date is in the future. So it's just this, it's doing some sanity checks. Uh, and then it's going to write out the uh, folders. It's going to create those folders if they don't exist for us. It's going to create the package. And then it's going to uh, add in some PowerShell into the chocolate install file. So in the chocolate install file, it's basically going to make sure that the license folder exists if it doesn't. And it's going to uh, copy the license XML file to the destination folder. And then it's got an uninstall script here, which is basically to remove that license file. And then it'll also uh, stub out uh, a, a new spec file, chocolate new spec file, which uh, contains all the metadata for the package. So it's it's got some information here about um, what the package name is. Uh, we could put our our name in here, and our organization name into the authors here if we wanted to. Uh, and then ultimately what it's gonna do is gonna run Choco Pack. So Choco Pack is the thing that takes the packaging files and generates a nutcake for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this and I'm gonna say allow access to that. And then again, at the minute on this workstation machine that I have, really the only text editor that I have just now is Notepad. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this as 
Uh, I think I have been using the temp folder for uh, my scripts I have. So that's the initial. So this is the uh, Choco license package dot ps1 so i'm going to go ahead and save that and if we open up a powershell prompt and let's make this a little bit smaller so that we can put everything on the screen and then let's cd into that folder when the prompt comes up one prompt let's think about it so cd into the c temp folder and in here, we will have that create license package. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run that. Oh, it's, why am I, it's not called create at all, it's called Choco. <laughs> Choco license uh, package PS1 file. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. So it's got a warning here. Prior to running this, please ensure you've updated the license file, which we have. Uh, warning, repeated this script, repeated. This script will overwrite the license file you have dropped into the packaging at there, and that's fine. So it's written out uh, the C Choco for us, or it's written out Choco for us so we can prove that it's got a bio license file in it. And it's creating a package. So if we go and look in our, so it's created that packaging folder for us. So in here, it's created a folder called Chocolate License. And in here, these are the packaging scripts. These are the ones that contain the uh, Chocolate install.ps1. So we could, we could look at that. Um, what's an easy way of... I don't actually know what that will open by default on this machine. It would be nice to have a, a text editor that we actually can make use of. So it's opening up PowerShell ISE. So one of the things, once we've got all of this set up and we've got Jenkins set up, one of the things is we can start downloading and internalizing all those packages that we actually want to install. So if you're a, a VS Code user or a Notepad++ user or an Atom user, we can absolutely uh, download, internalize those and make them available on our Nexus repository. So that's kind of where we're, we're trying to get to, but for now we're using the, the default tools that we have here. So this should literally just contain uh, what we spoke about on the, uh, as we were going through it. So yeah, it's got, uh, I'm gonna zoom in just a, a little bit more here so that we can see everything. Control plus will that flow through? No, it won't flow, th flow through the VM. So let's just open up a little bit. So it, it's literally got what we spoke about. It is uh, making sure that that directory exists, making sure, copying the license file into the right place and then writing out what it did. So that's the packaging scripts. Uh, so if we wanted, we could take those packaging scripts and we could um, put them into a source control repository for maintaining uh, later, or we can just use the script again to create it when we get a new license. Uh, but in the packages folder, we've now got a chocolatey license. I couldn't see it there for looking. We've got a new chocolate license. Uh, now the, the number at the end, the version number, it's taken the expiration date of the license file. So in 2021, uh, 18th of uh, January, February, March, April, 18th of April, 2021, that's when my chocolate license file is set to expire. So it gives a kind of a visual clue as to uh, when we would need to do something about that, when we would need to reach out to the sales team to uh, get a new one. Uh, and the benefit of using the date as the version number is that when we get the new version, uh, it will obviously have a higher version number. So with them, we can just do a choco upgrade. So with that created, we should we want to create put that onto our Nexus repository. So Nexus is where we're going to uh, keep everything. So. Uh, as per the last uh, video, uh, we pushed, or I kind of left everything running because there was no point in making you sit and watch all those packages getting pushed. But effectively what I did in the last video was I pushed all of the uh, packages in that uh, setup folder to both the test repository and to the production repository. So again, if I just sign in here with my uh, admin username and password. If I click on browse, then we can, I think it was 12 packages. So if I look in the test repository, <clears throat> we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, So the 12 packages that we used as part of the setup and installation of our workstation machine and of our Nexus repository, they're all there available to us. And then just to uh, show that they're all there, 
in my prod repository, I've got the exact same ones. So what I want to do now is I want to uh, push that chocolate license package. So let's cd into our C uh, choco setup uh, packages folder, and we're going to want to do choco push of the chocolate license, that one there, and we're going to want to push that to our uh, repository URL that I can never remember. So let's just go into our repositories here. I could have looked at the choco source. Uh, let's grab the test repository and let's grab this URL. Oh, it's thinking. There we go. If I grab this and I'm going to paste this into here. And just to reiterate the point that we did in the last video, this will fail uh, because by default, uh, Chocolatey wants everything to be secure and it's going to, uh, it's basically going to adhere to that uh, methodology. So uh, it's saying here, use force. If you understand the implications of pushing to a repository that doesn't have an SSL certificate associated with it. And what you want to do instead is uh, add on the force parameter. And with that done, it will then take that nutkeg and it'll push it up into our Nexus repository. And with that done, the next stage, uh, now that we have everything, we have all the packages now in there. So I'll let that finish. We have all the packages that we need to set up another machine and they all live in our Nexus repository. So before when we're, where we used a, a local installation script, uh, we'll go to the next stage, which is to take that installation script and also put it into our Nexus repository. Now, the benefit of doing that is that uh, repositories like Nexus uh, can both host uh, NuGet packages, but it, they can also host um, raw files, just a, a raw HTTP server. So we can host an install.ps1 file uh, directly within Nexus. So in the same way that we can do uh, uh, execute expression to grab uh, the install.ps1 file from chocolate.org, we can do the exact same thing by putting an install.ps1 file onto our Nexus repository. So then when we walk up to a client machine, we can do the installation in one step by uh, putting an installation script on there that does everything, all the setup that we need. So that's going to be where we go to go next, because in terms of where we are, that was exercise four for creating uh, a license package. And exercise five was to push that to the repository. So we've, we've, we've kind of done that as well. Uh, and just while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to put this into my production repository as well, just so it's there. Again, at the minute, I'm keeping my test repository and my production repository in sync kind of manually, uh, but we'll have uh, steps to uh, do automate that process for us in a bit, uh, in a future video, I should say. So here, uh, we're at exercise six, which is installing chocolatey on a client machine. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take the equivalent of the chocolate.org install PS1 and put our own one into our next repository. So that's going to be in the next video. Uh, so hopefully you can join me on that one. Again, if there are any questions, comments, uh, feel free to reach out in the comments below here. And uh, you can also uh, ask questions on Twitter if you have any as well. So for now, that's me on this one. Uh, so see you in the next video.